Pressure transducers can be used for multiple diagnostic purposes on a vehicle. Give it fuel pressure, transmission pressure, or one of the more popular tests to use is a running compression test. So let's walk through the setup. I have a capture here on the screen we can go through, but let's talk about the setup and what we're looking at on the screen when we're trying to analyze one of those patterns. So first off, connecting to the vehicle, we need to pull the spark plug on whatever cylinder we're looking at. In this case, it's the center cylinder here, cylinder number four. Um, you also want to make sure you disable the fuel injector when you're doing this. You don't want to be feeding fuel into the cylinder uh, when it's not firing. Next thing we'll take is a hose. Uh, this one we use out of a compression adapter kit or a compression gauge kit. If you do use a hose out of a compression gauge, you want to make sure you remove the Schrader valve from the bottom because usually they'll have a little Schrader valve at the bottom. So you want to make sure you take that out so you get a straight shot to the pressure transducer. In this case, the transducer is a 500 PSI. We do have a 100 PSI, a 500, and a 5,000. I like using the 500 just because I, I feel it gives me a better picture, cleaner picture on the tool. Then it has the included connector cable, which then gets connected to this pressure transducer adapter over here. It's a two-channel adapter, and it's able to also use two separate pressure transducers if you wanted to measure two separate pressures. And then, of course, at the other end, they connect into the standard connectors on the top of the tool. Also, do note that connector one on the tool is yellow, but on the adapter it is red because it's made to work on multiple tools. So we will see black, red, green. Red will go into the yellow. Green will go into the green. Black goes into black. So now that we've covered the hookup to the tool, let's look at this capture that I captured a little while ago. Uh, so we can see there are three separate peaks. So that would be three separate times of the max compression event top dead center of this cylinder that we're on, the cylinder number four. Uh, so let's turn on some cursors and do a little bit of a, an analysis, so to say. So we'll take cursor one, put it right there. That is the peak of that pressure. And they get a little touchy. Cursor number two, same thing. We'll put it at the second peak of the event. So right about there. Okay. So this would show us one time through of that cylinder going up and down. So we should see all four strokes in here. So if we see, let's look at this middle one. So if we see going up, that is our compression stroke. So that is the piston traveling up and it's compressing the air. And of course, so we would get a, a higher pressure, uh, air pressure in there. When the spark occurs and we have combustion, it will go down and we'll see a little vacuum pocket come down here. That is the piston going down to bottom dead center. Then it will go back up with the exhaust valves open. We should see a flat area right here, and that would be the exhaust stroke. It shouldn't go above zero PSI because we should, we're just open to atmosphere. And this is showing us relative to atmosphere, so we should see no more than zero PSI. If we do see more than zero PSI on the exhaust stroke, it could mean we have a clog in the exhaust, more than likely a catalytic converter problem. Then after the exhaust stroke, we'll have a little bit of an overlap and then the intake stroke will occur. So we should have another little vacuum pocket here where it's ingesting the, uh, the air, right? And then we have that little pocket and then once again it starts back over and then we have that compression event. So if we take a measurement, we can see the difference from here to here. So from number one to number two, the delta time is 200 milliseconds. So if we have four strokes in an engine and we take that 200 and divide it by four, we can use our time with our cursors to see where each stroke is. So we'll take this back over to the left till we get to about, well, 50, because 50 would be one quarter of that 200. So let's see, 41.94, we're pretty close. Go over there a little more, 53. So right about there, because there's always going to be a little bit of overlap in the valves, right about there will be the combustion stroke where it's coming down to bottom dead center. Then if we take this and go over here, Another 50 or so, a little too far there. There is, split the difference, pretty close. There we go, close enough. So there's my exhaust stroke with the exhaust valves open, intake valve closed. Then my intake valves would open right here, go over another 50 milliseconds or so, and then we would start our compression stroke right about there. Start the compression stroke on the way up, and then we should have about another 50 milliseconds there till we get to the top, and there would be our compression stroke. So we can see if we don't have vacuum on the way down, 
we can see if, if there's uh, anything strange in the exhaust valve. Maybe the exhaust valve isn't opening. Maybe it's uh, staying open. We can see all the changes. This is a known good pattern, so this is what it should look like. Uh, there are other resources that, that can be had online to find what, what known bads are. Uh, we actually have a, we do have a YouTube training video on pressure transducers that also has a couple examples of known bad vehicles in there as well. Definitely be worth a watch there. Uh, so that is a quick tip for how to use pressure transducers on a running compression test.